Welcome into Bears Now by Chat Sports. I am Harrison Graham. Could the Chicago Bears trade for Washington Commanders edge rusher Montez Sweat? That's where we kick off today's Bears News and Rumors show. CBS Sports listed the Bears as a logical landing spot for Sweat if he were to get traded. And the reason he could, well, here's Cody Benjamin from CBS Sports. In an ideal world, Sweat would build on a promising pass rushing resume to earn a mega extension in Washington, but the commanders are already paying top dollar to fellow defensive linemen Deron Payne and Jonathan Allen, and Chase Young is also on board. And I think the point Cody is making here is Washington's going to have some choices to make, and they've already made some of those by giving Deron Payne a huge contract. I personally believe that Washington will likely have to choose between Montez Sweat and Chase Young. Uh, and uh, with Chase Young being a former number two overall pick and still having uh, two years on his rookie deal, I believe, two or three uh, with the fifth year option and Sweat entering the final year of his rookie contract, they might choose Young even though he's had more injury concerns and maybe they're willing to deal Sweat uh, before the NFL draft. Now you look at Montez Sweat's career numbers, he has 29 sacks in four seasons. He's not like, uh, as a pass rusher, he's almost like Yannick Ngakwe to me, where like he's not the elite of the elite, but he's pretty solid and consistent. 2021, he only had five sacks, but he only played in 10 games. He missed seven games. He would have, you know, been eight plus for sure that season. He's been pretty consistent. Uh, he's a decent run stopper. He's probably better than Sweat in that regard. Uh, and he's still young. He's only been in the NFL for four seasons. So you bring him in here, uh, put him at edge rusher, uh, then you just kind of need a three-tech in depth at that point. Demarcus Walker uh, is going to play some edge, some three-tech sweat, uh, could start at edge. You would have Dominique Robinson and Travis Gibson as backup guys. Get a, a guy or two early on in the draft, and your defensive line all of a sudden is a lot better than it was. Uh, I don't think there's any doubt. Sweat's a solid pass rusher. I mean, he's going to give you seven to nine sacks. That's kind of what he's been in his career outside of the one year where he missed seven games. So, you know, it's interesting if you're going to trade for him. Obviously, you would commit to an extension, but I don't think you'd have to pay him crazy money because, again, he's been good but not great. Like, I think you could probably get him at, like, $15 million per year. So you trade for him, give him, like, a three- or $45 million extension, uh, maybe even a little bit less. I think that could work out. Now, again, it takes two to tango. Washington would have to show interest in moving sweat, but – considering they've already invested a lot of money on that defensive line, he could be someone that they're uh, willing to say is expendable. Now, should the Bears trade for Montez Sweat? What do you guys think? Type T for trade or P for pass. Uh, this will be the pinned comment on today's video. So if you get hit with the YouTube ad break, scroll on down and reply to the pinned comment with a T for trade or a P for pass. Let's stick on the defensive line, but go to the draft from the trade market. Are the Bears in or out on Jalen Carter? That seems to be the $64,000 question right now. Peter King, who has spoken with Ryan Poles quite a bit, uh, reports that there's a real chance Carter falls outside of the top 10, which makes you wonder, are the Bears out? They have the number nine pick. Here's Peter King uh, on Jalen Carter earlier this week. He said, I wouldn't be surprised unless Seattle takes him at five if Jalen Carter drops outside of the top 10. I asked the coach of a team outside the top 10 who is very interested in Carter and, ha and has researched him. The issue with Carter's alleged involvement in uh, speeding in connection with the accident that killed two people from the Georgia program is worrying. Um, here's why the Bears could be out. Peter King has talked to Ryan Poles a lot, so I think that if King is saying that unless Seattle takes him at five, that he could fall outside the top 10, again, he's not saying for sure, but – he has a decent feel for how teams probably feel about the Jalen Carter situation at this point. He might have the feeling that Chicago won't go there. Now, Ryan Poles has been asked about this very topic this week at the League Odor meetings. We will talk about that here in just a minute as well. But first, got to tell you about our sponsor, and that is Athletic Greens. And we appreciate Athletic Greens for sponsoring today's episode of Chicago Bears. Now, get comprehensive and convenient daily nutrition by going to athleticgreens.com slash chat sports. I started taking AG1 a few months ago go toward the end of the NFL season, gave me that energy boost that I needed, and now I'm humming. I'm in my routine, and on a daily basis, I'll take a scoop of AG1 by Athletic Greens, and I just feel a lot better uh, about myself. Not only is AG1 getting me back into those good habits, but it's helping me improve my gut health, which is a direct benefit of Athletic Greens. That's something I've needed to do for a while now. Uh, covering my nutritional basis for the day could not be easier, which is why I personally trust Athletic Greens. All I do every single day is 
just mix one small scoop of AG1 with water, drink it first thing in the morning, boom, it's done. I also love that it's only less than $3 per day uh, as well. A pretty cost-effective product, if you ask me. It's a really effective daily habit with the highest quality sourced ingredients, a true win-win. If a comprehensive solution is what you need for your supplement routine, then Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. So go to athleticgreens.com slash chat sports. That is athleticgreens.com slash chat sports. Check it out. That link is in the comments. It's in the description. Get the free vitamin D, the free travel packs with our link below, and you can promote your gut health, support your immunity, and boost your energy with one scoop a day. Link in the comments and description. All right, here's Ryan Poles on Jalen Carter, but also just the idea of if the Bears can afford to take a risk uh, with a draft pick where they're at in their rebuild, he said, I do want my owner and president to sign off and be on the same page. He later said, we're in a better page, uh, in a better place to take a risk, but at the same time, we also want to be careful because we're still young and impressionable. I think making sure that we continue to bring a good core group in is important. Maybe down the road where you want to take a risk like that, I think the locker room begins to run itself and you can take some chances. Is he kind of alluding toward the end of that when he says maybe down the road as he's not going to take Jalen Carter right now? Because remember, they are still early on in this rebuild. I think the Bears will be better next year, but a couple things to consider here. One, this is Ryan Pohl's first first-round pick. He didn't have one last year. Like This is huge. He already traded down from one to nine. Do you do that and take Jalen Carter with your first huge draft pick as a general manager in the NFL? It's risky. The Bears are going to do their homework. Ryan Poles is continuing to do that. They're bringing him in for a top 30 visit, but Jalen Carter has not helped himself out. I mean, for, for him to just completely screw the pooch at the pro day is not a good sign whatsoever, and that came after the arrest situation. Um, I'm just not sure this rebuild is far enough along to take the chance. I, I'm really not, and it's a shame because I think Jalen Carter at number nine as a player is great value, but can he be trusted? Is he the type of player you want to help spearhead a rebuild like this? If he can get his head on straight, I'd say yes, but do you know that? Like, I, I don't know. I, I wish the best for the kid. I hope it works out, and maybe it will be in Chicago. But if you had to ask me right now, do I think they'll take him if he's there? I don't. Like, I, I, If I had to guess, I don't think they would take him right now uh, based on how Poles is talking and just where they're at in their rebuild. What do you guys think? Is Jalen Carter worth the risk? Type Y for yes, type N for no. Get your votes in down in the comment section below if you think the Georgia defensive tackle is the is worth the risk or not. Now, the road to 65,000 subscribers has been underway for a couple of days now after we crossed 64,000, thanks to all of you. We're 884 subs away. We currently sit at 64,116. Got to get the 65K for a live fan-led mock draft. We did one at 60K. We're going to do another one at 65. Got to get there before the draft. Let's get there ASAP. Hell, can we get there by next Tuesday? Uh, before our next Tuesday live show. Uh, if we do, we'll uh, do a live fan-led mock. So hit the sub button, daily videos, multiple videos per day. We'll continue to do it here on this channel. Speaking of the draft, could the Bears trade down again? David Kaplan, who's covered the Bears for a while, used to be of NBC Sports Chicago. Now he, you know he's been doing his own YouTube channel. He still has his own radio show on ESPN 1000. He said this on his radio show that, He's hearing the Bears are very interested in trading the number nine pick. He says there's a lot of smoke out of the owners' meetings that the Chicago Bears are absolutely open for business, trading the 2023 ninth overall pick. Now, you look at what the Bears have right now. Ten draft picks, 9, 53, 61, 64, 103, 133, 136, 149, 218, 258. Uh, and they've got three or four picks in the top 64, but three of those four are 53 to 64. Maybe the Bears want to bridge the gap between 9 and 53. Maybe they want to add a pick in the teens and then maybe a pick in the 40s or something like that. Uh, I could see Ryan Poles trading down again. Maybe he wants to get more ammunition for next year's draft as well. Uh, I would not be shocked at all if the Bears move down a little bit. Now, I don't want them to necessarily move down to like the 20s and just keep moving down. Like, eventually draft a premium player that can help you win right now, like that can help right away as a rookie. Now, obviously, this is a multi-year rebuild. You're not tr thinking you can win a Super Bowl next season, but um, if there's a player at nine you love and you don't get trade uh, offers that are great, then just take the player. I mean, there's there's absolutely nothing wrong with that uh, whatsoever. So 
Uh, Ryan Poles has not been afraid to make trades. He's made several trades involving picks and players since he's taken this job. We know that. Um, could another one be in store? Certainly feels like it's definitely a possibility. All right, some notes from Matt Eberflus today at the uh, – uh, league meetings, a uh, few things that I found interesting. He said that Tremaine Edmonds will likely be playing that Mike linebacker spot, which means T.J. Edwards would play Will. When they initially signed, I thought it would be the other way around, but then there was buzz uh, you know, in the days after that that it would be this way, and it sounds like that's going to be the case. Edmonds, uh, of course, got the big contract, but Flus has always said that Will spot is more important. But if T.J. Edwards can play at a high level, it doesn't really matter where they play. They're both going to play uh, a ton, so – uh, that's interesting. Uh, pass game emphasis at OTAs. Iberflus says they're designing their OTA program to spend as much time as possible on the passing game, which makes sense, right? Running game in OTAs when you're in T-shirt and shorts, it, there's not a ton of value there anyway because a lot of the running game is physicality at the line of scrimmage. Well, you're not in pads, so it's not like your right guard is blowing people off the line of scrimmage. It's work on the passing game, get these guys on the same page, get fields more reps that way. He also uh, – this is the first time I've heard – Flus or Poles publicly say this. He believes Braxton Jones can flip the right tackle if needed to. Said he thinks he can play left or right. That is significant to me. So if you draft Paris Johnson, I would think you would be drafting him to play left tackle and move Braxton Jones to right. So I found that noteworthy. Uh, he also mentioned he could see a scenario where the Bears sign a, a quality veteran defensive lineman. He mentioned when he was with the Colts in 2019 when they signed Justin Houston after the Chiefs cut him uh, and that it was after the first wave of free agency. So maybe that means Yannick Ngakwe could still be in store for Chicago. He didn't mention it could be a move that happens after the draft. I do think based on kind of the – this, the calmness that free agency has been for the past week or so, especially for this team, I do think teams are shifting their focus to the draft for now. Maybe a big wave comes after the draft in terms of free agency. And then, obviously, he was talked about, he asked about Justin Fields, and he thinks that, you know, with the additions, uh, you know, getting DJ Moore, continuing to bolster the offensive line, which they still need to do a little bit, thinks that he will take that next step and expects him to do so. And obviously, we all do, right? Like, this is a big year for Justin Fields entering year three. Okay, fill in the blank for us. The Bears will win blank games in 2023. Won three last year. Um, you know, I think at worst it's probably a five or six win team, and I think at best, you know, they could push for a playoff spot. Maybe they can win nine or ten games. Uh, who knows? Probably somewhere in the middle, but still a lot of roster constructing to do. Let me know how many games will the Bears win this year.